Now let's talk about standard three duties to clients and prospective clients. Let's read the standard first. It's standard 3A which is loyalty, prudence and care. Members and candidates have a duty of loyalty to their clients and must act with reasonable care and exercise prudent judgment. Members and candidates must act for the benefit of their clients and place their clients' interests before their employers or their own interests. So what's the basic guidance now that we need to be concerned with? The first point is that customers come first. So customers have preference or precedence over your employer and over you. Hence, it is important to identify who your client is. So if there is a, a conflict of interest between your client and your employer, you the client will always come first. Now, it's not always easy to identify who the client is. So let me just give you a simple example. Say you are a fund manager and you are managing a large pension fund. Now this is an employee pension fund for XY, let's say XYZ company. So you are managing the pension fund of XYZ company and you work for ABC asset management company. Now so 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 this is xyz's pension fund so who is your client some of you might think that the client is the is the company itself but that would not be correct your clients are really the employees of this company so the pension ultimately is for the employees so your client and hence your fiduciary responsibility is towards the employees because the pension fund is for those employees. So anyway, need to be sure on and as an as your as an asset manager, you need to know who your client is. You must be prudent when developing client portfolios. So this concept of prudence is extremely important. This essentially means that when you are managing someone else's money, you need to manage it as if you were managing your own funds, assuming you had similar circumstances as your client. So essentially, you put yourself in the shoes of your client and then you manage your client's money the way you would manage your own money. So it's important to be cautious and you have to use a lot of discretion. Another important item has to do with soft dollars or soft commissions. What this means is your client might give you commissions to pay for brokerage. So the client gives you money to invest plus the client gives you money to pay for brokerage so to pay it pays you to buy stocks bonds etc now let's say you are here in the middle you are the asset manager and there is a brokerage firm that you deal with so when you buy shares for the client you deal with the brokerage and you give some money to the broker now if the broker is giving you back research or some other benefits those benefits must be helpful to the client. If those benefits are really for your firm and not for the client, then there is an issue. And any, any benefits that you are getting that are not necessarily helping the client must be fully disclosed. In fact, your overall policies related to soft dollars and commissions need to be documented and disclosed 
and this material is covered in a lot more detail in level 2 so at level 1 as long as you have a basic concept that's all right in level 2 there is a full reading dedicated to this subject the next item that you need to be aware of is proxy voting policies what does this mean so let's say that you are buying shares for your client and it is possible that you buy shares in ABC company when you buy shares in this company there will be times when there are proxy votes related to this company so there might be a vote for a new chairman of the board of directors and so on and and you since you have bought shares on behalf of the client you might be in a position where you are voting on who the next chairman is on the board of directors now when you make that vote you need to keep the interest of the client in mind so so that's one point now at times it might be possible that it's not feasible to vote all proxies and if it is better for the client that your time is spent on evaluating uh, investment options rather than researching every single proxy vote uh, that is fine but your proxy voting policies need to be clearly documented a general point is that this standard 3a loyalty prudence and care is not a substitute for regulatory requirements so while your duties to clients is extremely important but if there is any conflict with regulatory requirements or legal requirements then the leg the regulatory and legal requirements come first now what are some procedures related to standard 3a one general comment is that as an asset manager you should provide regular account information to your client this means that at least every quarter you should send statements and these statements should clearly indicate any transactions that took place during the quarter uh, beginning balances ending balances etc so at least every quarter the client should be informed if you are ever in any doubt about whether a certain action will benefit the client or not given the client's risk profile or given the client's circumstances then the recommended procedure is to check with the client so so the more often you interact with the client the better you will understand his or her circumstances and that will allow you to make better investment decisions for your client in terms of the overall policies for uh, investment management or an asset management company or firm some important points one is uh, one is you must follow the law so the law comes first and nothing that you do should be should break the law in any way another important one is to establish investment objectives we will study this in a lot of detail when we do portfolio management but when you establish a new client it's important to define what the investment objectives are what the risk and return profile is for your client and this should be done collaboratively with the client so you and your client are on the same page in terms of whether in terms of what the investment objectives are for your client's portfolio whenever you make any decisions you should consider all information so consider all information so what this means is that you need to consider the client's circumstances the current uh, economic state so from an investment perspective what makes sense what doesn't make sense in the current economic climate so you must take all these into account when you are making decisions carry out regular reviews with your clients so this will ensure that if client circumstances are changing you are aware of them you must deal fairly 
with all your clients. So you can't give preference to one client over another even if a client is related to you. So a classic example shows up where your brother is one of your clients. If he is a, if he is a paying client of your firm, the, the treatment that you give him would be exactly or should be the same as other clients who are in the same category. If there is ever a conflict of interest, you must disclose it. So that's important. And any compensation arrangements. So if you have any compensation arrangements uh, outside, so for example, if you have any compensation arrangements where you are writing a research report which is paid by the company that is being researched, that should be clearly documented. Uh, you should vote proxies where it makes sense and if you are not voting proxies then there should be a clear policy statement on, on proxy voting. Maintain confidentiality. So any client records cannot be shared unless there is some legal requirement or if there is a, a case that needs to be investigated and for that you need to share client information then you can but in general your client information is confidential and should not be shared. You need to seek the best possible execution. So when you buy stocks, bonds or other investments for your client you need to ensure that your client is getting the best possible deal. And finally, most importantly, whenever there is a doubt, you always place the client's interests first. So these general procedures will help your organization comply with standard 1A, which is loyalty, prudence and care. Now let's just look at a simple example and I referred earlier to sometimes the difficulty we might have in identifying a client. Say there is a large company who is a client of yours. So let's say that the company is PPL and there is a employee pension fund that is under supervision. So the trustee for this fund is a company called Asset Management Company. So Asset Management Company is the trustee for the for PPL's employee pension fund and you are the fund manager. So you are the fund manager for this employee pension fund. So this, this is the situation. Now here keep in mind that your, your client is or your clients are the employees of PPL and not the management of PPL. Even PPL, even though PPL might be paying you the fee and they made the decision to hire you so you want to keep them happy but your clients are really the employees of the firm and it's these employees whose pension fund you are managing. So your fiduciary responsibility is towards the employees. So with that context, now let's say that uh, a large company called XYZ is trying to take over PPL. So the CEO of PPL approaches you and asks you to buy shares, so he tells you to buy shares of PPL in the open market so that PPL share price goes up. The point here being that the CEO and the management of this firm wants to try to inflate the price of PPL so that the takeover company is discouraged. And, and 
you believe that the current share price is somewhat overvalued. So given your research, you believe the share price is overvalued and under normal circumstances, you would not buy these shares for your client. But under pressure from the CEO and possibly your management and to maintain good relationship, maintain a good relationship with this entity, you go ahead and buy the shares. Now, is that right or wrong? So per standard 3A, this is, this is a violation. Why is it a violation? Because you did not adequately fulfill your fiduciary responsibility towards your client who, or towards the, uh, towards the employees or the, uh, the people for whom this pension fund is relevant. And hence you violated the standard 3A. You gave precedence to your own organization over your clients. So clearly a violation. Standard 3B is fair dealing in the context of duties to clients. Members and candidates must deal fairly and objectively with all clients when providing investment analysis, making investment recommendations, taking investment action, or engaging in other professional activities. So let's talk about the guidance in this context. The first point is that there should be no discrimination between different kinds of clients. So whenever you have multiple clients, there is a potential of a favoritism which is not allowed per standard 3B. Keep in mind, however, that fair dealing is not the same as equal. It is possible that you have different levels of service and obviously those who those who are uh, those clients who are paying for a higher level of service do deserve a higher level of service so all clients don't have to be treated equally but they have to be treated fairly so within each service category you can make a case that within each service category the clients should be treated in a similar way so basically that means that different levels of service that is okay. Now in the context of investment recommendations, so investment recommendations, all clients must have a fair chance on every recommendation. So if for example you have decided to upgrade from hold to buy. So a given stock has been upgraded so your investment recommendation has changed. Now this information must be disseminated quickly to all your clients. It would not be right if only a few select clients get to know this information before others because that then would put the clients who receive the information fast will be at, at an advantage over those who receive the information slowly. And in the same context, if a client is unaware of a recommendation change and, and they call you, for example, you have made this recommendation change and the client calls you indicating that they want to sell the share, it is your duty to inform the client that the recommendation has been changed to a buy and if the client wants to continue with the decision to sell then you should go ahead and sell but make sure the client is aware of the decision change. Now in the context of investment actions so some important things to keep in mind We've already talked about treating all clients fairly. So this means that for every client, you have to consider their circumstances, their uh, so their circumstances, their risk return profile, etc. 
when making decisions. Clearly, different clients, different decisions will be appropriate for different clients depending on their situation. It's important to disclose all allocation policies. What this means is, let's say that you are dealing with a hot issue. What does hot issue mean? This means that you are, let's say, you have shares for a company that has, uh, you know, a very successful initial public offering. You have a limited number of shares. Now, there might be a tendency to distribute these limited number of shares only to your to your best clients. This would not be fair. What you need to do is if you have an oversubscribed IPO, that means that the number of shares demanded is more than the number of shares available. The one strategy is to distribute shares on a pro rata basis. And it's also important that when you have a hot issue, then there should be no, no shares to, should be allocated to the firm's proprietary account or even to your personal account. So clients should get precedence and clients should be treated fairly. Let's now talk about uh, procedures in the context of fair dealing. It's important to limit the number of people who are aware of any upcoming changes. By limiting the number of people in your firm who are aware of upcoming changes, that reduces the chances of uh, a few clients finding out before others. It also reduces the chance of any body within your firm trying to trade for their own benefit ahead of uh, ahead of uh, informing clients or making information public. Uh, second, shorten time frame. So this is the time frame between making a decision to disseminating information. So if that time frame is very short, that again reduces the chances of some people finding out before others. Number three, have pre-dissemination guidelines. So have pre-dissemination guidelines. So this way your firm ensures that any discretion that employees of the firm can use, any discretion is minimized. Number four, simultaneous dissemination. This means that if you have multiple clients and you have um, a new, uh, you have upgraded say a stock from a hold to a uh, buy, this information should be disseminated simultaneously to all your clients. If you just inform a few uh, on day one and then inform the rest on day two, that is giving your clients who are informed on day one an advantage over those who get the information on day two. Maintain client list and their holdings. This will help because if you have a recommendation change, it is easier to then identify which clients need to be informed. Clearly, it makes sense to inform the clients who have a holding in those shares. So it makes sense to inform them. Disclose any trade allocation procedures. So if you have, uh, you know, I just talked about an example of uh, a, of a hot issue. So your clients need to be clear that if there is a hot issue, then how will the firm allocate the limited number of shares across clients? So moving along, you should review accounts frequently and make sure that clients are treated fairly. So make sure that clients are treated fairly. And finally, if the firm offers different levels of service, so if there are different levels of service, these need to be disclosed very carefully. And uh, finally, having understood these procedures, uh, an important course of action for, for you preparing for the CFA exam is to study all the examples in the curriculum. We'll now talk about standard 3C, suitability.
when in an advisory relationship with a client, make reasonable inquiry into client's investment experience, risk and return objectives, and financial constraints prior to making any recommendation or taking investment action. Update information regularly. Judge investments in the context of the total portfolio. When responsible for managing a portfolio to a specific mandate, strategy or style, take investment actions that are consistent with stated objectives. So now let's touch upon some of the most important points that we have just discussed. In terms of suitability, the first thing that you must do when you are working with a client is to create a investment policy statement. So what this statement basically does is defines what your investment strategy is going to be. We'll talk about exactly what's contained in this on the next slide. It's also important that the IPS should be updated regularly. So at least once a year, the investor policy statement or IPS must be updated. When we are talking about suitability, we need to be aware whether leverage is relevant for our clients or not. Simplistically put, if our client has a above average risk tolerance, then it might be relevant to have some leverage in the portfolio. But if the risk profile is below average, then leverage would not make sense. If you are managing a fund, let's say a fixed income mutual fund, then it is necessary that you take all your decisions that are consistent with the objectives and constraints defined in your prospectus. So, so those are some high level points related to guidance. Let's now talk about some uh, procedures related to standard 3C. As we just mentioned, creating the IPS is essential. Now, what is con contained in the IPS? The most important and one of the first items in the IPS is the return objective. So, what is the, so you have a discussion with your client and figure out what's a relevant return objective. And this should generally be stated as clearly as possible. So you might have a number such as a 10%. You might have an objective such as a 10% return. It's also important to state the risk tolerance. And this typically would be above average risk tolerance, average or below average. Clearly, the investment decisions that you make for your client will depend on how much risk they can take. And there also needs to be alignment between return objectives and risk tolerance. Clearly, if risk tolerance is very low, then that means that return objectives will also have to be relatively low. We should also determine the client's constraints and unique circumstances. So what are some of the constraints? What are the client's liquidity needs? So does your client, for example, need money to pay for his daughter's college edu education after five years? Does the client have any required or expected cash flows? If your client is, a, a, let's say, an endowment and they need dollars two million per year to run the to to run the organization so that's a required uh, so that's an expected cash flow and the investments that you make need to factor this expected cash flow we should also look at time horizons when will money be needed in how much what is our whether we have a short term horizon, long term horizon for this investment, what uh, tax considerations, 
clearly if your client is in the high tax bracket then it might make sense to view or to invest in say bonds which are tax exempt on the other hand if your client is in a low tax bracket then then uh, it would not make sense to invest in tax exempt bonds you should also look at the regulatory and legal framework before you make investment decisions and finally it's important to understand the unique circumstances of your client so your client might be uh, you know for example your might client might tell you that he does not want to invest in stocks that deal with alcohol tobacco and firearms so that would be a unique requirement for your client all this material needs to be documented in the investor portfolio statement or the investment portfolio statement and this essentially drives the suitability of investments ultimate objective is that investments that you make for your clients should be suitable for your clients standard 3d is performance presentation when communicating investment performance information make reasonable efforts to ensure that it is fair accurate and complete some basic guidance on the on the standard you should not misstate or misrepresent so do not misstate or misrepresent your performance provide fair and complete performance information complete performance information and do not imply that results achieved in the past can also be achieved in the future let's take a small example let's say that over the last year you invested in three stocks x y and z x returned 10% y returned 2% and stock z is a stock that you did not want to buy at the start of the year but on your client's insistence you purchased this share also and let's say that this returned 50% so overall given all three stocks you have a, a very high average return of almost 20% if you in your marketing material claim that you achieved a return of 20% that would be correct strictly speaking but it would be misrepresenting the fact that you never wanted to purchase stock z and a more accurate depiction of your return would be based on the stocks x and y which you actually picked so the whole point here is that the performance presentation needs to be fair and accurate both in letter and in spirit we'll study this material in more detail later on in the ethics course when we cover gips global investment performance standards a few general procedures when we deal with performance presentation one important point is that you must consider your audience obviously if you are talking about standard deviations and mean absolute deviation to talk about risk and the level of sophistication of your audience is very low this does not make any sense so speak in a language that your audience can understand another important point is that rather than stating the returns of specific investments it is better to state the returns in terms of uh, let's say you want to talk about large cap funds and you are managing three large cap funds when you talk about your return on large cap funds you should take the weighted average of these three funds and state that as your return or if you are managing a portfolio for three wealthy clients and the three portfolios the three your wealthy clients have similar characteristics when you when you talk about your returns 
it makes more sense to talk about the overall or the weighted average of the returns that you are providing your clients rather than a specific investment. Include terminated accounts in your returns. The reason being that let's say you are stating returns over the last five years and a few of your accounts decided to move elsewhere. You need to also show the returns of those clients because that will give a more meaningful picture of the returns that you achieved over the last five years. And finally, make sure you, that you maintain all records and make the necessary disclosures. Finally, we'll talk about standard 3E, which is preservation of confidentiality. This standard states that you must keep information about current, former and prospective clients confidential unless info the information concerns illegal activities of your client and there is potentially a requirement and there's a requirement by the law to disclose that information. You can also disclose information if a client or prospect allows disclosure of the information. Now this is fairly self-evident. The slight quirk here is that if the CFA Institute is doing a performance or, a, or is, a, is if the CFA Institute is conducting an investigation through the professional conduct program then you are supposed to cooperate with the CFA Institute and here you might have to disclose confidential information if necessary. So that is it with regards to standard 3E. You need to now practice the examples or read through the examples in the curriculum and practice as many questions as you can.